A short video today guys, let's talk about bokeballs. You know that effect that you get when a point light source in the background is out of focus and then it turns into these oval or round shapes. Bokeballs. I don't know if that's even the correct name for it. Maybe there's some kind of more scientific name, but I don't know. Bokeballs. Anyway, so a few weeks ago someone in the comments asked me why my balls... <laughs> This is gonna be a very, very interesting video. I, I can feel it already. Someone in the comments asked me why the bokeh balls in some of my photos and videos are so big and round and smooth. So that's what I wanna show you today. Because there are a few things that affect the size of your balls. <laughs> huh. You know what? I'm gonna use the word circles because if I keep using that other word, then I'm not gonna be able to finish this video. I'm sorry for that. Bogus circles, even though they're not really circles, also not balls, it's more like discs, right? It doesn't matter. Wow, it's gonna be a tough one today. The first thing that's important is aperture. If you use a wide aperture, so low numbers, then you will get big circles. And if you use a small aperture, high numbers, then you will get smaller circles. I did some test shots of one of my cameras with some Christmas lights in the background. City lights, street lights also work really well, but Christmas lights is by far the easiest way if you want to experiment. Here the aperture was set at f8, so the circles almost look like dots. And then here the same shot but at f1.8. Big circles. So use a wide aperture, low numbers, and also the shape of the circles will be rounder and smoother when you shoot wide open. Although it also depends on the shape of the aperture blades inside the lens. Okay, and then we have distance. First of all, the distance between the subject, in this case the camera, and the Christmas lights in the background. So the closer the light source is to the subject, the smaller the circles will be. But also the distance between the subject and the camera is important. For this shot, the distance between subject and camera was around 50 centimeters. So I guess that's two feet, a little bit less. And then here it was half that distance. So the closer you go to the subject, the bigger and smoother the circles will be. For both shots, the aperture was set at f1.8. And the circles get bigger because when you go closer to the subject, you have to shift your focus and then the depth of field gets shallower. Okay, and then finally, focal length. Longer is better if you want big, round, buttery smooth circles. Not balls, circles. <laughs> wow, I wonder if YouTube is gonna flag this video for like inappropriate, big, round, buttery, smooth, b No? Not sure. We'll see. <laughs> okay, anyway, so you need a long focal length if you want bigger circles. This was shot with a 35mm and this, same framing with an 85. Both set at f1.8. And this is the 85mm with the aperture set at f8, also a big difference. And this is far away from the subject and close to the subject. Okay, so aperture, distance and focal length all affect the size and the smoothness of the circles. But also the quality and the design of the lens and of course also sensor size even. If you want the biggest, smoothest circles, then use a long focal length, shoot wide open, so low numbers, f2.8, 1.8, 1.4 even, and go as close as possible to the subject. And also make sure that the light source in the background is not too close to the subject. That's it guys, I hope it helps, thank you so much for watching, have a nice weekend, and see you in the next one.